Yellowstone National Park has been hit by almost a hundred earthquakes in the past month. Lean to fear as the massive caldera could blow. Yellowstone Volcano has always been a seismically active area, but the best part of a hundred tremors and in 28 days will only raise fears. In total, 94 quakes have hit the National Park in Wyoming, prompting experts to keep an eye on the area. All of the quakes have been relatively small, with the largest registering as a 2.4 on the Richter scale. One coming on July 28th, and then again on June 15th. But some experts warn that sometimes the size of the earthquakes is relevant, but the quantity of them could be more of a forewarning. It is said that a spat of small earthquakes around the volcano usually signifies that magma and gases beneath the surface are beginning to navigate their exit. If you get swarms under a working volcano, the working hypothesis is that magma is moving up underneath there. However, others disagree about whether an earthquake swarm near the volcano could be a sign of things to come. However, it is believed that this is just part of the natural cycle for Yellowstone. You know, earthquake swarms are fairly common in Yellowstone. Plus, there is no indication that this swarm is relative to magma moving through the shallow crust. If Wyoming Volcano were to erupt, an estimate 87,000 people would be killed immediately, and two-thirds of the USA would immediately be made uninhabitable. The large spew of ash into the atmosphere would block out sunlight and directly affect life beneath it, creating somewhat of a nuclear winter. A massive eruption could be a staggering 6,000 times as powerful as the one from Washington Mount St. Helens in 1980, which killed 57 people and deposited ash in 11 different states and 5 Canadian provinces. If the volcano explodes, a climate shift would ensure as the volcano would spew massive amounts of sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere, which can form a sulfur aerosol that reflects and absorbs sunlight. Yellowstone's volcano's potential next eruption has been predicted with the help of NASA technology and USGS scientists. The Yellowstone caldera gets its chilling label as a supervolcano due to its ability to inflict devastation on a global level, should another super eruption occur. Satellite images taken by the advanced spaceborne thermal emissions and reflective radio meter are helping scientists to identify hotspots and rising magma to warn of any future events. Since 2004, Yellowstone National Park officials have been studying thermal features around the park, hoping to identify if a supervolcano may erupt again. Now though, thanks to the help of NASA, they can get a real-time information revealed any signs of a sudden rise in temperatures below the surface. It is said that this is technology and data that could be applied to any geothermal and volcanic areas around the world to monitor eruptions and maybe even predict volcanic activity. Most volcanoes aren't monitored until they erupt, so maybe we should be monitoring beforehand to really get a better idea of the volcano lifestyle and how they differ from each other. To take data manually is difficult, especially with Yellowstone, because it's such a huge area. It becomes hard work and very time consuming. The researchers use thermal imaging from space to monitor roughly 10,000 geothermal features of the Yellowstone region. They take images overnight to prevent picking up heat from reflected rocks. They then study them to identify any areas of concern. A super eruption at Yellowstone has occurred three times in history. As we know, it's 2.1 million years ago, 1.3 million years ago, and 640,000 years ago. Which has led to suggest another one that is overdue. However, researchers working for the USGS have stated that this theory couldn't be further from the truth. First of all, one cannot present reoccurrence intervals based on only two values. It would 
statistically be meaningless. But for those who insist, let's do the arithmetic. The three eruptions occurred 2.1 million years ago, 1.3 million years ago, and 0.64 million years ago. The two intervals are thus 0.8 and 0.66 million years ago, averaging to a 0.73 million year interval. Again, the last eruption was 0.64 million years ago, implying that we are still about 90,000 years away from the time when we might consider calling Yellowstone overdue for another caldera forming eruption. Nevertheless, we cannot discount the possibility of another such eruption occurring sometime in the future, given Yellowstone's volcanic history and continued presence of magma beneath the Yellowstone caldera. It was previously revealed how researchers at University of Utah were left stunned when they discovered and produced images of a reservoir of hot partly molten rock 12 to 28 miles beneath the surface. The hot rock in the chamber is 4.4 times larger than the shallower, long known tunnel previously mapped out according to the study. It is said in 2015, for the first time, we have images the continuous volcanic plumbing system underneath Yellowstone. That includes the upper crustal magma chamber we have seen previously, plus the lower crustal magma reservoir. That has never been imaged before, and that connects the upper chamber to the Yellowstone hotspot plume below. Despite popular beliefs, these magma chambers are not full of molten rock ready to erupt. Instead, it is mostly solid and sponge-like rock with pockets of magma. It is thought the discovery does not mean that Yellowstone is any closer to erupting. The magma chamber and reservoir are not getting any bigger than they have been. It is just that we can see them better now using new techniques. It gives a better understanding of Yellowstone's magmatic system. Now using new models, it's better to estimate the potential seismic and volcanic hazards of Yellowstone. But what are your thoughts? I mean, would, would we really be told if Yellowstone was to erupt? Are the USGS right? Or maybe there's something we haven't learned about Yellowstone. Maybe Yellowstone is quite erratic. Please let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time.